do you mind if we start watching the set together? And if there's something you want to tell me at some a certain point, you know, stop me, fill me in. Nothing I love more than sitting back and watching my stand up. <laughs> Play. A lot of work goes into a short late night stand up set. Join me, JP Buck, as I spotlight the comedians who came up with some of my favorite coin sets. This is The Setup. Please welcome the very funny Tig Notaro. When I was working at The Tonight Show, I was talking to your manager about trying to get you on the show. Mm-hmm. We were working on a set. Yeah. And then we were no longer on the air. <laughs> so I didn't have the opportunity to have you do that set there. I didn't, I didn't remember you working at the Tonight Show. It was only for seven months. <laughs> I see. Cause I was going to say, I have, I don't think that's correct because I know <laughs> the Jay Leno Tonight Show turned me down for years and wouldn't put me on. So I thought you were saying you worked for Leno and I was like, I don't remember that because I remember it's very much a part of my story that I tell people. And that is how focused I was on trying to get on the tonight show with Jay Leno and then having absolutely no luck for years and years and years. And so many of my friends that I came up with surpassing me and getting on the tonight show with Jay Leno. And then, um, and finally reaching a point where I, I shifted my focus and that focus went to, Conan. Flash forward, we're back on the air TBS, 2011. In September of 2011, you actually did a set that for the first time, and I've not, I've not heard this since, Conan demanded me to book you the next week. It just kind of blew my mind to go from a show that I was clearly <laughs> not ever going to be on, and then um, the open door on Conan. You and I had kind of settled on about three and a half, three plus minutes, which were your first, your opening bits. And then we were sort of at a, I felt like we were at a stalemate of trying to figure out how do we close the set. So I remember you called me, I was at home, I picked up the phone and you said, I've got this idea. And you started telling me a story. I was performing in Seattle. And um, when I was on stage, I moved the stool next to me just slightly and it made this weird noise. And it caused the entire audience to laugh collectively. And I was like, oh, that's all you guys needed? I said, okay, so you're going to actually do this? And you said, no, 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 that's the bit. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just, you were dead serious. And I just, I mean, I trusted you. I didn't think what you I had told to me say, on the phone. I have to say, it didn't feel like you totally trusted me. Well, I mean, I did say, Okay, let's come by. Let's 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 book you for the show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I I remember you being like, um, so I'm sorry. You're gonna just you're gonna move a stool. I remember <laughs> working it out at, in the main room at the comedy store. Uh huh. That's where you came to see me um, do it, and uh, and you were like, okay, let's do it. I remember trying to find spots for you, and I was sending out emails. And the question I would ask is, does your stage have carpet? (laughs) A question I've never asked, I never thought about. You know what, now I know. The comedy store, the belly room, and Largo doesn't have carpeting, but it has a small rug, which you can work around. Yeah, I've worked around that rug many times. (laughs) Many times. Improv. Improv has carpeting. Uh, Flappers in Burbank has carpeting. Things I never knew before that working with you taught me. The amount of work that went into selecting a stool, number one, mm-hmm. and number two, finding the spots on a stage that Would actually make made noise. Squeak. Yeah. If I was running into a problem with the stool noise in a theater or club, I didn't feel under pressure, really. I could just kind of search for the best spot on the stage. But when you're on national television, the stool didn't quite doing what you thought it was going to do. Then I just thought, all right, well, I got to have a new plan because this floor sucks. Actually, what I can show you now, this is our crew, our audio, our props, our stage department, all working to figure out the best location on the stage for you to do this. Yeah, I've never seen that. 
Lucy uh -huh. Vince? No. Hey, look, look at the other stools in the background there. Those are the, the runners up. <laughs> we learned that wood was the best. Yeah, it really doesn't mean. Type of stool to push. And there's <laughs> John Rauer, prop master. Dust it gets bad. too dusty, it loses yeah. the sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. We used to have an opening credit sequence where they would show a comedian, they would say like comedian, Tignataro, and they would show a microphone. Mm. Your rehearsals alone made our graphics and editing department want to put together an actual graphic for you for your opening. I don't know if you remember seeing this. I never saw, I never noticed that. It's very subtle because yeah, no one knows yeah. what's coming, but he's basically, he's telegraphing your bit. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So I just kept pushing the stool and they kept laughing. So I just kept pushing the stool and they stopped laughing. So I kept pushing the stool. They started laughing again. And it just kept going like that for a while, a good 10 minutes. So I was just curious what you guys would think if I push the stool here. Oh, the old mic in the pocket. <laughs> I thought I would take the stool party up closer to Conan's desk because I saw the plexiglass across the stage that had, I guess, the lighting underneath it. And I thought, oh, I yep. that would make a good sound. So I jumped up there. I remember Paul F. Tompkins was sitting there and I remember thinking as a comedian, what does he think of me right now? I feel like maybe some of you aren't into it. <laughs> that doesn't offend me. If you're not, raise your hand. I'm not, if you want me to stop, a couple of you. <laughs> maybe it's because you haven't heard it enough. <laughs> Were there any raised hands? Oh yeah. Whenever I do that bit, there's always people that are just like, please, no, like it, it <laughs> stop. <laughs> Which of course just feeds me. <laughs> See how it just keeps doing that? <laughs> For those of you that do like it, I'm gonna, that's gonna be on my new CD. <laughs> and please look for it, the, it's called Stool Movement. <laughs> Thank you, my name's Tig. Oh, great. <laughs> 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 I remember, yeah, I handed him my business card, which uh, I have right here. This. They're lovely. And there is uh, no contact information. <laughs> so when I am at a party, I like to hand somebody this and say, we should definitely keep talking about that. And then, um, you know, just bits, 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 <laughs> bits. 509 said, the level of commitment to a joke this woman has is Herculean. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. I don't know anyone who has ever accused you of not committing to a bit. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Whenever somebody's like, God, I can't stand her, I'm always like, I hear you. I, 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 can, I can imagine <laughs> that I would really annoy people if you did not like my style. Next day in rehearsal, after your performance, our director started cueing your stool sound to irritate Conan during rehearsal. I remember <laughs> hearing about that, yeah. 
it, the, it became the, an ongoing audio cue that I think some people consider <laughs> nails on chalkboard, but I think it's nails on a chalkboard for, for a good amount of people. And I don't know what it is that gets people laughing or coming around again after it drives them insane. There's got to be something about it scientifically. I don't know if anyone's come to you, wanted to do a study about this bit. Nope, not a single scientist has approached me about uh, <laughs> studying this bit. But if there is a scientist out there uh, watching, I'm, I'm game. I love, love, love working with you. And I mean, from everything that you've done on the show, I've, that I've been lucky to be a part of. I mean, you do 99% of heavy lifting. I do like maybe 1% of like giving Conan a heads up as to where you're going to go. I love going on the show. I feel, I feel the support and I feel the freedom. And it's, it's very nice. All of, all of the help and leeway that you and Conan and everybody on the show gives and allows for it's it's so great